is I'm looking for a specific, um, I believe it's on page two, um, when it mentions each offense, uh, well, it indicates no co-defendant, but there actually technically is a co-defendant. I don't know how significant that is to the report, but. Well, what, which, you said page two? So if you look at when it's listing current offenses, uh, it indicates, um, can you just like, so at the top it should have a CFJ something. I know they mix the pages up, but uh, okay. which so CFJ? This is, this is when it's listing each current offense. So under current offense. I just want to know which, because there's many page twos and I'm not seeing which page. I, I, have, the, I have my page two of the PSI report where it's listing the current offense in each count one through seven. So is that the CFJ 145? No, CFJ 101. Thank you. 101, okay. So if you, if you look under each count, it lists uh, the PAC code and the victim relationship and it's this code of them. Right, and it there says is, none. There is a code of them. So do you want me to just cross that out? Add yeah. a name? Which, Correct. which one? Yeah, D'Angelo Bank. And you can add it in manually. It's the, Okay. And I heard a phone ring. If another phone goes off, it will be taken by the deputy. So please make sure your phones are on silent. If you don't know how to silence them, just leave them out in the hall or in your car. Okay. And so that will be for numbers one, two, and. I think it just counts one and two, you're off. And any other additions or corrections? Mr. Lachman? No, no other. Okay. And um, Mr. Cordes, any additions or corrections? No, Your Honor. I did note for the jail credit, I believe he's entitled to the credit on the CCW as well as the felony firearms, but it's listed as zero. So I did make that correction. Thank you. But Mr. Kraft, I'll ask if you agree that there are no other additions or corrections to make to the report. I agree. And Mr. Lockman, is there a victim representative here to be heard? There, there are three victim representatives that we wish to address the court at this time. Okay, so I'll ask Mr. Kraft and Mr. Cordes to step over. Come up together if you like, Thank but you can't talk at the same time. Okay. 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 And you want to speak first? Yeah. Okay. And what is your name? Sonia Crump. Okay. Can you spell your first name? T O N I Y A. Okay. And what would you like to say? Um, so today I'm very angry and I just want to shout it out but I can't let this be about how I feel. I'm standing here today in this court to tell you who my father, Tony Vaughn, is and what he meant to his daughters and family. The way he was taken from our lives had nothing to do how he, would have nothing to do how he lived his life. I refuse to let this horrible way he left this world be the end to his story. I will not let people remember my father as only a victim when family and friends think of my father Think of my father. They always remember smiling and caring, family man. Tony is so much more than my dad. He is a son, a grandfather, brother, uncle, and cousin, and a great fan, friend. My father is, my father is a girl dad. Long before it was popular to be, and he was always proud of that title. <clears throat> He loved talking about, he loved talking about how special his daughters were to him. Tony is a spin image to his dad, but he never longed to have a son to carry his legacy because he had us. Today is hard, it's hard 
not to reach for my phone and call and say, Dad, what are you doing? Some days I turn around to expect it to see his smile and see him smiling at me. Be see him smiling at me because I feel that loving present. I am struggling with depression. And I want to stay in a place, I don't want to stay in a place of hate. But I know he would, I want to stay in a place of hate, but I know he would not want that for me. My dad loves celebrating his birthday. And his family knew that because he always let us know and everyone know that June 23rd was coming. <sighs> that is what me, my sister, and his favorite niece, Tiffany, were planning to do that day. <sighs> the day he left us. We went from planning a birthday party to planning a funeral on the same day, which was his birthday. Now that's extra hard to remember his day because his day of birth, because that's the way he went out on his day. <sighs> now we have to separate the two. We have not had enough time to do that. Those two life changing events are forever tied in one day. Standing here this morning, I choose not to have evil and hatred toward you. Not even say your name. You. <sighs> oh my God. I can't undo anything. And all the pain I have experienced by my father's horrific passing. What can come from standing here is to be part of the only form of justice we can receive. We can make sure of that in my father's story, he was moved from victim to victorious. I came here today to make sure this day was about my father, Tony Vaughn, and those who loved him. No matter how much time this court allows me, it will never be long enough to tell you who my father, Tony Vaughn, is. You see, even in death, his story continues because that's being bright, because that bright light allows this to happen. His laughter in his daughter, his laughter from his grandchildren, that makes us turn around and carry the attitude he showed his family, his family members, most of all, his entire family. We will laugh and talk about what to do on June 23rd, his birthday. He will always be a legacy. Tony Vaughn is his, his, his name. And we will always, always say it, no matter what. His favorite niece, a large part of her soul is gone because people keep telling that they're sorry for a loss. But we want to shout back at them. He didn't lose his uncle. Hateful people took him from him in a family. While my dad was celebrating his birthday, trying to celebrate his birthday, pure hatred and evil snatched it from him. In a cruel way, we have to relive this horrible sight every day. We can't pl plan any more surprise parties for him and he'll be there in his presence. That turned into a funeral. How do we wrap our brains around this? On, on this, it was on the same day. We know how important his birthday is because we have suffered so much loss over these last few years. My father lost his oldest siblings. We had grown even closer because of this. This was, the, that this was possible. He was at rock, he was more like a big brother to his favorite niece, Tiffany, than an uncle. I had never known a time in my, in time in my life when Tony wasn't there for her and family. He held everybody up through the tragedies, laughed with everybody through all milestones, decorated for every birthday party, every dinner. 
Everyone is devastated from this actions, from cruel people that took my father away from us. We are very lost in trying to move forward. How do we navigate through life with worst tragedies that we have without my father, who always made sure everyone was all right? He would never ask what you need. He would always ask, what do you want? We are very lost in trying to work our way through this pain and hurt. But once again, Tony Vaughn's legacy will continue to move on forever. Thank you. And um, what is your name? Lashina Vaughn. And could you spell your first name, please? L-A-S-H-E-E-N-A. -E -E Thank you. And what would you like to say, Ms. Vaughn? Every day since June 23rd has been a nightmare. Heartache, pain you have caused my family Sleepy everyday life. My daughter has to do counseling to get to school throughout the day. I love my dad so much. He's the first person I think of. Months ago, he was saved by his Lord and Savior. So I know where he's at in spirit. This is not only affect my family, but yours as well. I can't forgive you. Maybe I, I, just, I can't. I keep playing the morning over and over in my head, saying, Dad, it's your day, it's your birthday. You're getting old, man. We love you. But instead, I get a call and say, you're gone. You're supposed to be here. You took someone that was respected, a grandfather, a cousin, a friend. Anger and just why. Going to a group won't stop the pain. Telling someone about Tony and all that he was still to me, will not let him walk back through my door. This is from his favorite niece, Tiffany. I can't think or remember a time that Tony was not part of my life because the only time that Tony was not was the day we laid him to rest. Sometimes I feel envy for those who say goodbye to their family members at the end of sickness because they have the chance to say goodbye. All I had was with Tony, see you later. I thought we would be celebrating him later at his surprise birthday party. I can't stand in this courtroom all day and tell you how much I love my uncle and you still will not get it. What I really mean, my uncle wasn't a man who thought about helping people, he just did it. In our family, he was always the one who went to the park and set up for hours, holding the best spots or showing up early to events to help out. And when things were finished, he helped until it was finished. I don't know, a family member that has moved to a new home and Tony wasn't a part of the moving crew, So tell any of his family how to move forward with the special part has gone, is gone. We also knew that Tony will always be where he was needed. Only he is not where he is needed today with us. Thank you. Mr. Cordes, if the two of you could please return to the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lockman, did you have any additional statement on behalf of the people? I do not, Your Honor. All right, and Mr. Cordes, statement? Uh, just to reiterate what was in the pre-sentence report, uh, I've always found Mr. Kraft to be 
uh, pleasant, positive, and polite uh, in all of our dealings. And I, I know he is uh, going to file an appeal in this matter. So uh, with that, uh, we'd ask the court go ahead with sentencing. All right, and Mr. Kraft, did you have anything that did you have anything that you would like to say before I sentence you? No, ma'am. No. Okay, well, Mr. Kraft, at this point you are 26 years old and you have five prior felonies and eight prior misdemeanors and we're here for you to be sentenced regarding this incident that occurred back in June of 2022, June 23rd to be exact, um, where you along with at least one other person apparently made the decision to end the lives of Mr. Lusk and Mr. Vaughn. You were found guilty after evidence was presented to a jury. You had a jury trial. Um, there was a lot of evidence presented, including some ring camera footage. There was some video from a store from across the street. Um, that along with all of the other evidence presented led to you being convicted of this double homicide as well as being a felon in possession of a firearm which you were ineligible to possess carrying a concealed weapon and then three counts of felony firearm um, i want to say to to the family members that spoke and those who didn't that i am sorry for your loss um, Better yet, I am, I am sorry that the, the lives of these men were stolen from you, that your father was stolen from you, that your uncle was stolen from you. Um, you are definitely understandably angry in this moment. I was glad to hear Ms. Crump state that she does not have hatred towards this defendant because that hatred would only serve to continue to victimize you for years to come, as opposed to having you focused on continuing to represent your father's legacy, which is obviously more important. Um, and Mr. Kraft, I don't know, obviously your actions had a ripple effect. I don't know if you were didn't think of the ripple effect or simply didn't care. Um, your actions in this case are simply inexplicable and this is just a needless tragedy. Um, I'm not sure what more I can say with respect to that. And there are mandatory sentences in this case, so what I'm going to do is sentence you in accordance with those mandatory sentences, which means that four counts, four, five, six, and seven, which are this carrying a concealed weapon, and the three felony firearm charges, um, you're gonna receive 716 days credit for all of those. For the felony firearms, I'm sentencing you to the two year mandatory sentence. For the carrying a concealed weapon, I am sentencing you to four to five years in the Michigan Department of Corrections, which will be served consecutively to the felony firearm charges. I'm sorry, the CCW will not be consecutive um, it will be run, running concurrently. In addition to that, for counts one and two, which are the homicides of Mr. Lusk and Mr. Vaughn, I'm sentencing you to the <coughs> mandatory sentence of life in prison without parole. And this, you'll receive credit for zero days. This sentence will have to run consecutively to the felony firearm charges and I'm also sentencing you to for the um, counts three and four, which are the felon in possession and the carrying concealed weapon. I'm sentencing you to four to five years in the Michigan Department of Corrections. That's in accordance and within the guidelines scored for those particular counts. In addition to that, Mr. Kraft, you will be responsible for $476 state minimum cost, $130 crime victim rights assessment, and $1,000 in court costs. You do have 42 days to appeal this sentence, Mr. Kraft, and if you'd like a court-appointed attorney to represent you in an appeal, you have 42 days to make that request. And that's what the purple sheet is for, that the deputy will give you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Honor.